Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to continue from where we left off. We're looking at the roots of Caitlin's learned helplessness. Where did she learn to accept responsibility for somebody else's issues um, and feel like somebody else's feelings should come first? And why doesn't she trust her own feelings and her own thoughts and get herself out of a situation um, in which she's being abused at the moment? My feeling is that this has come from her having already experienced somebody else's feelings coming first consistently growing up. So uh, where we left off, Caitlin's mother was saying that Caitlin hadn't been thrown out. So she was arguing about the specifics. She was she was saying that she had already um, moved out when they changed the locks on her. She is welcome to come home whenever she wants. Trust has been broken, has been damaged, but we still love her with all our hearts like we always have. She hasn't read the next bit, which says, if you reread your text, the only criteria was an adult needed to be home. She was never thrown out. So how would that work then? If she were to come home, but she's not actually allowed to be in the home without an adult there, how would that have worked? I mean, what would happen when the adults, you know, when her parents went out, when they went to see a friend or something? or when one of them was at work and the other was going shopping or something like that, what would Kate have to do? Would she have to leave the house? And a week later, since yesterday at 4 p.m., my phone has been blowing up from friends and family about things, is that I can't know. I have tried everything I knew as a good father and it didn't work, so the time to try nothing and back off has, has come. I tried everything I knew as a good father and it didn't work. That's a strange sentence, isn't it? It's, it's just strange to say, as a good father. My love for Caitlin will never waver. My hopes and prayers will be with you to be safe. Uh, three days later was the, the now his car accident where he totaled his car. I was just informed you two were in a car accident. Everyone is telling me that you were both okay. Please remember that Caitlin has full medical coverage. If she needs to see a doctor, it is covered. So then, two days later after the accident, I tried to scope because there had been how many comments and such about um, on, let's see, I have video clips of 36, 37, 38, 39, um, of when he kept alluding to the abuse and what she has endured and everything. Um, I can't get a consistent sound, though. I'm not good at this stuff. So um, but so this was my response to all of that uh, before I went into, because I we had had to put Amber to sleep the day before. So then I did this, and then I went to the Adoration Chapel because this was the day they were leaving the state. So then, uh, let's see, at 11.48 in the morning, um, <laughs> refers to her father by first name. Even though it's signed her, she has never, ever referred to either of us by our first names. Just to clarify, I do not wish for you to reply to my email, but I want to alert you because I do love you. I'm not sure if you know that Diane is scoping or not, but it is not a good idea. Jim has seen dozens of people lose their over periscope. She doesn't have a, but you do. I only briefly saw a glimpse of her scope, but the people in her chat are extremely poisonous people. The type that if they turn on you because they can make a dollar off of you by turning you into entertainment, they will find your information and call your until you get and then plaster it across the internet. It's called doxing. Please stay vigilant. Sincerely, Caitlin, future. So, just to clarify, this sentence underlined in blue is not Caitlin's style of writing. If she sent this, I'm guessing he dictated it. But, cannot tell for sure. 
Uh, so then, her father did respond, though, over lunch. Two people can look at the same event and see the same thing two different ways. I hope someday Caitlin will call and ask why to the question she has, and she will let me tell my side so she can understand, and maybe we come to somewhere in the middle. So she needs to ask to listen to her father's side of the story, you know, to get an explanation. She needs to ask him, what are the reasons? Why did you lock me out of the house? He doesn't see it as his responsibility to explain himself to his daughter. He doesn't seem to feel that there's any um, reason that, that, you know, he has any duty to apologise to her. Again, you know, it just seems that there's this really strong power dynamic going on in his mind. You are accusing us of abuse. No way this is true. We have a lawyer and have a three-point approach to stop lies. If you start lying with specifics. If Caitlin starts to lie about specifics, I won't let her destroy my family. You are accusing us of abuse. No way this is true. Well, that's very final, isn't it? And again, it's this, it seems to me to be just more of the same. It's this competition again. You know, you are wrong, it's black and white. We have never done anything abusive. You're completely wrong. No way this is true when they've just locked their daughter out of the house, that, that they can't even consider that they could have been in any way emotionally abusive. And they need to tell the world that they have never been abusive, that, you know, show pictures of her smiling in her childhood um, and, and talk about the family games they played, the holidays they went on, the car they bought her, just to make sure that we all know that, that there's not any ounce of truth in any of this and saying you're accusing us of abuse you know it's like um you know that everyone's in court this is an accusation right we're getting our lawyers which is what they've actually done they've got a lawyer apparently <laughs> you know because it's just so intolerable to be spoken about in that way here's another part of one of these videos put out for the parents so it says not only do I know the family and this is total crap, you know, so she, in other words, she was never abused in any way, but the family has shared they had four independent, <laughs> in capitals, counsellors evaluate the family and zero evidence of abuse was found in the family now or in the past. So you've got to wonder, well, I wonder what they heard <laughs> and why were they called in? Well, I would guess that it's probably because they've consulted this lawyer. So they, they want these counsellors to prove that they absolutely haven't ever abused their daughter. And, um, and we can hear from the account they've given us, you know, from the account the mother gives reading these text messages. She doesn't ever say we changed the locks because she lied to us and we wanted to punish her. Um, or, I mean, she doesn't ever admit any of their intentions. We always have to read between the lines the whole way through this. So when she was talking to the counsellors, you can imagine the way they were told this story. And I wonder how much of the story was missed out. Even when she's going through text messages in front of us, she's blacked out a message. Um, she's uh, blacked out parts of other messages. She's failed to read bits of people's messages in order for us to take her side. So without all the text messages, I wonder what she would have said to these counsellors and what her aim was. And I don't get the impression that she would have been looking for a way to improve, you know, or wanting to talk to them about any doubts she had or any guilt she felt. I think they were called in in order for her to prove her point. I've been making this video over a few days now. And when I started, there were no comments under any of these videos that weren't in agreement with the content creator and the family. So um, everyone was on their side. And sometimes things that the mother says 
um, tells me that she's expecting her family to watch this because um, she's talking about things that they'll all be familiar with that we won't. Uh, and she's saying, do you remember when to people? But over the past week, a couple of people have voiced different opinions. And look at what happens when they do this. Bobin321 says, I'm sorry, but no wonder Kate has picked up with this deadbeat. The mother is crazy, changing the locks after she's just moved out. Why? A some kind of power play? And her dad is showing no emotion at all towards her and only caring about his other two kids. Is he only Kate's stepdad? And this was the reply from the content creator. You're entitled to your opinion based on limited knowledge, but if that's what you got out of this video, yikes, watch it again. Did the parents do everything right? No, but they did the best they could given Caitlin threw away 100% of her family, friends, co-workers, church, schoolmates, 100%. So her response to that is to completely change the subject and to make Caitlin look bad. She hasn't responded to anything that's been put in the comment above. And then she says, Jim is a master manipulator and outplayed this family. So now she's blaming someone else. She's changing the subject again, away from the parents. You have no clue what you are talking about when it comes to this loving family who did nothing but try to help. And Lauren Kay says, why did the parents change the locks and the brothers not let her in the house? That's probably the reason he was able to convince her they didn't want her anymore. And then look at the reply to this one. A whirlwind few days of major surgery, brutal lies, out of the way antics by Jim and Caitlin to prevent the mum from recovering. And brutal lies. So a white lie turns into a brutal lie, a really malicious one. Caitlin moving out and a warning from doctors that if the mum's stitches ripped out from the crying fits, she would bleed internally and might not live long enough to make it to the hospital. <laughs> so, you know, maybe that's true. It could well be that the doctor said, you know, you've got to just stop crying all the time because it's not doing you any good. And it's, you know, there is this risk that you'll break the stitches. Nothing terrible happened. She was fine with James at that time. She thought James was a really nice guy. So why was she constantly crying? And, um, and why was the cure for that to lock her daughter out? She discovered that her daughter had been afraid to tell her the truth. So um, she would pretended she was staying somewhere else. But why would that make her cry? You know, that might have made her realise, I, I, I better just stop being so hard on her and uh, stop guilt tripping her all the time. And then she might feel she can open up to me. Instead of being able to see things from her daughter's point of view, it was all about her and feeling betrayed because she saw herself as the victim. She couldn't have looked at that situation and thought about how hard she is on her daughter and how much her daughter has to carry her and her husband's feelings around and be responsible for them. And she couldn't have seen her daughter as their victim in that situation, but that she would have lied because of this. If she didn't lie, she would have to be responsible for their feelings about the truth. What builds trust is being able to be wrong, you know, being able to admit that you're wrong. And without that, how can there be any trust? Because everything has to fit into this illusion that, um, you know, that they're perfect. Out of the way antics by Jim and Caitlin to prevent the mum from recovering. It's as if Caitlin and James are being accused of trying to murder Caitlin's mother. And apparently this is because they had been thumping upstairs. I don't know what the thumping noise was about, but maybe this was when Caitlin was moving out because it seemed to happen at around the same time. So maybe they were getting her stuff together and so it sounded like there was thumping from upstairs. 
Um, I don't imagine that it would have been to try to stop the mother from sleeping. <laughs> the content creator from the Caitlin Be Safe channel has been watching my videos and under the last video she wrote a comment. It said, I can see many of your points how Jim was allowed to take the role as hero. A few things. One, no one was throwing out Caitlin's things. Putting things in trash bags on the porch was Jim's directions to the parents at that point of the conversation on how to get her things. This never occurred because it was changed many times that day on how Caitlin would get her things. What the mum was reacting to was that Jim didn't just want the parents to put the things in a trash bag, but was giving them detailed instructions on how to pack the things, in what bags, etc. It's interesting that this person thinks that what's important is whether the stuff was thrown out like trash. Well, isn't the point that her stuff was going to be put out on the front porch, that this is what the mother suggested doing? Jim only suggested putting it into trash bags. Whether it's in a bin bag or a shopping bag, does it really matter? And yet he is being blamed for this, just like anything that's blamed on the parents um, by anyone commenting, including me, is always then instead twisted round to be either Caitlin's or Jim's fault. Here is what she said. I just can't see it turning good. Having her in the house, I will put her stuff on the front porch. She says this never occurred, as if that means something, as if it didn't occur for, for Caitlin's benefit. But actually, here's the reason the stuff wasn't left on the porch. I'm open to discussions, but I want this to be fair to both sides. I don't want to be accused of not giving her everything. So I would like her to come in the house and see her bedroom, but I truly want this over as quickly as possible. Two, the comment about getting her things quickly. Again, you know so little. Jim demanded the family lock themselves up away from Caitlin while she was getting her things. Thus, the parents were just saying that if the family was going to be locked up in their own home, they wanted it over quickly. The comment that Caitlin wanted them to come down was well before Jim's final edict on how he was controlling the situation. His final demand was that the family stay 100% away. Despite Jim's demands, at the end, the father refused to follow Jim's rules and left the bedroom to give his daughter a hug. This was well received by Caitlin, and he was even allowed to follow her out to the car and help her carry her things. And this doesn't match what's in the text messages. Here it is again. I would like her to come in the house and see her bedroom, but I truly want this over as quickly as possible. Will the porch be ready for sex? Unfortunately, we have been advised by the police to not touch her things because if anything is broken, then we would be to blame. So we need her to come in. We will not talk to her. We will not engage her. Please make sure this happens as quickly as possible. And you see the conversation from start to finish. You see all of the text messages. Certainly at this stage and throughout these text messages, Jim never says anything about how the family should stay in their rooms. So that cannot be the reason for the mother saying this. Caitlin and I would more than greatly appreciate it if everyone could come to the front porch to say goodbye when we pick up her things at six. We will knock on the door and wait three minutes. Whomever comes, we are grateful. Now, like I said, at this point, her dad was just like, whatever. Um, so that was the real response from the mum, that her dad was like, whatever. And then she uh, goes back on that and says this. And at that point, I believe he was at the police department talking to the police himself, um, trying to find out like, what the heck should he be doing here? Um, so I don't even think he saw this part. Um, I know I did not until like weeks later. It reminds me of how she responded sarcastically to something that she read in an email and then how she quickly, um, changed her, her response and sort of tried to excuse her behavior. We will continue to keep your family in our prayers. Yeah, that's comforting. Sorry, prayers are always welcome. Let me rephrase that. The uh, fact that she was taking a time out from her friendship with her best friend is what I was referring to. 
Three, the comment about asking Jim and Caitlin to be quieter or go to another room. Are you serious? They were asked to be quiet, but Caitlin did not agree with the mum's choice to get this surgery. And thus, Caitlin and Jim were dancing loudly over where the mum was trying to sleep. They banged things, made noises and went out of their way to express their displeasure and punish the mother. During this time, the mum was learning about complications with her surgery and additional testing. This was a very stressful time. She's so far made sure that we all know about anything that Caitlin has done that she perceives as wrong. And she's also made sure that Caitlin knows about it. So why isn't there a text to Caitlin about this? And why isn't it included as one of the reasons for why she changed the locks? Why does she just say it's because she lied? So we're left to question, is it more likely that Caitlin will have intentionally danced and thumped around to try to stop her mother from recovering from surgery? Or is it more likely that her mother is again painting her in a bad light that doesn't reflect her real actions and her real intentions? Seems the changing of the locks is such a sticking point. And in retrospect, I can see that. At the time, Caitlin had already moved out when the locks were changed. Complications with the mum's surgery after wild punishments from Caitlin and Jim and you add how Jim made comments about the things the parents had. He drooled over stuff. So part of the locks was to keep Jim out so the parents' house was not robbed. Mistakes were made and I hope people can learn from your videos what not to do. But make no mistake, in the heat of the moment, dealing with a psycho like Jim, most parents would make many of the same mistakes. I responded saying, you are recognising locking her out as a sticking point, as if Caitlin's parents were normally giving her what she needed emotionally, but they put a foot wrong here. From your last sentence, you don't seem aware that this was the tip of the iceberg and that there are many examples across these text messages that show to what extent Caitlin's feelings and thoughts were invalidated. Had these been respected and validated throughout her life and then her parents had somehow had a joint breakdown and locked her out in a fit of temporary insanity, that alone wouldn't have caused her to have stayed with someone like James because she would have had enough self-esteem, self-belief and self-trust to know that it had nothing to do with her. Locking her out was just something that came from symptoms that were already very clearly there and I believe a lot of damage will have been caused over the years and that we are seeing that damage in her clearly now. Your mission to defend the parents at all costs isn't actually helping them or Caitlin. I can see that they think it is and I say that because Caitlin's mother has thanked her for these different videos. But all it's helping them to do is to avoid responsibility and continue to behave in a way that means their daughter won't have any reason to trust them. You're acting as a flying monkey, spreading misinformation for them and encouraging people to accept their narcissistic behaviour. And this is the response I got. I was trying to help clarify items so your videos could be more factual. What was put online was usually tipping points and oversimplified versions, so videos weren't hours long. So in that sentence, she's completely ignored the evidence of the text messages. She's saying what was put online was tipping points and oversimplified versions, but actually it was the text messages. It was all of them in order that were read out by her mother. I've written in a really simple way the evidence that actually her mother had said to put the stuff on the porch first, that she was the person to bring it up, for example. And she hasn't gone through and actually looked at that evidence and made a decision about it. Instead, she's just decided that the evidence isn't meaningful. 
I have no doubt the parents made mistakes, but focusing on bad, you will find it, doesn't change the massive amount of good they did. I see now you refuse to even consider these parents as good and my input is not valued. So I will say goodbye while we are still civil to each other. So what what we've got there is that she won't consider the evidence I've put in front of her she doesn't want to know. And the fact that she says, I will say goodbye while we are still civil to each other, suggests that this is really personal to her. Now, she has said that she's known the dad for 20 years. So it would make sense that it would feel personal, that it would be very hard for her to be able to be objective. Nothing I've said in the video makes any difference. It doesn't matter how much evidence you put in front of her. And this is the case with flying monkeys. You know, they, it doesn't matter what evidence you put in front of them. It's as if they've been brainwashed. They're just absolutely convinced that the person whose misinformation they're spreading is in the right. And their role is to protect that person no matter what. She asked me on a previous video for advice and said she would give it to the parents. And here I've put advice, you know, I've said that protecting them at all costs doesn't help them. It's helping them to avoid responsibility. That means that Caitlin won't trust them if they won't take responsibility. So there is the advice that that, that I feel is the best I can offer you know, that, that really might have made a difference to Caitlin. But it just makes this lady so angry that she has to say goodbye while she can still be civil. Caitlin did not help after her mother's surgery. True. Jim got sick the day after the surgery and Caitlin had to take care of Jim 24-7. Jim returned from the emergency room with an inhaler and even though Jim was sick, Caitlin and Jim loudly thumped in Caitlin's bedroom directly over where Caitlin's mum was trying to get bed rest. Who knows whether there was a motive to this, whether Jim wasn't really sick and he wanted attention or not. But then it goes on, Caitlin also had to sleep at Jim's house to take care of him at night. Caitlin was not thanked in the mum's Facebook post because she did not help. <laughs> <laughs> Even before the surgery, Caitlin was requested to do a few simple chores around the house since she quit college and to pay $200 a month rent to ensure she did not become one of those kids who freeload off their parents until their mid-30s. She was, what, 18 at the time? She barely did the chores and the family routinely ran out of clothes and towels, plus others ended up needing to clean the bathroom. That does make me wonder just how many chores she actually had to do. I know that this was one of her complaints was that she had loads of chores. Um, and they've said, well, it's really good for kids to have chores. But I do wonder if there were excessive chores. You know, if she was she was paying rent and she was cleaning the bathroom and she was doing the washing, it looks like. And she was also cooking meals for the family. I don't think that was every day. I'm not sure how many days a week she had to do that. So Caitlin's mum put up this Facebook post thanking everyone for helping her and leaving Caitlin's name off, which feels really pointed. You know, that again is, is triangulation, that she's, um, she's telling others, look, you're with me, you're on my side, in the same way as she did with her brothers when they weren't allowed to let her in. And she's doing the same with all these videos. She's doing the same. You know, she's getting her friends, um, friends of the family, family and anyone else who wants to watch. She's getting them all to take her side as she points out what her daughter's done wrong. Also, you did the doxing first. If you never had used Caitlin's last name, her brothers would not be getting harassed in school because of this. The, the brothers then got bullied because um, James had put out a video mentioning their surname. And so this was their fault again. 
again, the parents, it seems like they're completely blind to their own responsibility in all of this. Caitlin's brothers wouldn't have been bullied at school if none of that had happened. If the parents had behaved responsibly like adults, if they hadn't been um, trying to make some point um, trying to punish their daughter. And then when they're accused of doxing, they say, well, you did the doxing first. You know, we're back in the playground again. And, and the emphasis is always on winning. And that is a narcissistic approach, you know, to this competitive thing, this need driven by your ego to beat someone. No matter how anyone feels at the end of it, that, that's just always come second. And what's so ironic is that them doing this, you know, them having this goal of winning all the time, that is the whole point, you know, that is what has made their daughter suffer. And you have to be seen as in the right all the time. If you admit to these big mistakes, then this mask is going to fall apart and everyone's going to see how small you really are. You know, not being able to admit to your own mistakes or to take responsibility is a sign that you're so hard on yourself that you're convinced if everyone sees how you've screwed up, they're gonna have no respect for you at all. So they're working so hard to maintain this, um, this image of being these really great parents that they're actually failing to take this opportunity to actually improve as parents. You know, this is an opportunity to actually look at their behavior now and see how many times they've ignored their daughter's boundaries and how many times they've put their own neediness and their own um, unreasonable um, thoughts and um, out of control emotions before their daughters. But ownership is hard. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard. But it is not wrong. For me to set an expectation that well, you will own what you've done to me. Yes. Because everyone else is going to own it too if they keep coming after me. Yeah. So every time you shove that down. I think it's, it's worse. You're making it worse for me and you know it. You know it. And then try to hide it in that moment and give me a hug. People like James Soroka don't have the power to make anyone their victim. You have to doubt yourself you have to not trust your own thoughts and feelings to be manipulated by a person like James and and of course it gets worse you know the longer you're in an abusive relationship the less confidence you have uh, your self-esteem gets lower and you uh, trust yourself less and less you become hooked on um, on the love bombing and so on and I've made videos about this I'll put uh, I'll pin one in the comment section so you can have a look at that at why people don't leave these relationships and the addictive nature of them but nevertheless none of this is possible if there isn't already self-doubt um, and distrust of your own thoughts and feelings so a person who um, enters a relationship like this and stays in one will already have a degree of learned helplessness. And that doesn't come from nowhere. That's not, you know, that's not a sort of genetic abnormality. Parents who don't want to feel any responsibility for the impact they've had on their kids can blame things like that. They can say, well, that's just her character. You know, or it's just her age or something like that, but it just doesn't work like that. It's all about um, being validated, you know, having your thoughts and experiences validated. That's why when a mother picks up a baby, they will imitate the baby's expressions to show them, uh, obviously unconsciously, they're not doing this intentionally, but, but we do it naturally to show the baby that, um, that how they feel is, is right, that that's okay, that it's valid. 
And this has to go on throughout the child's um, um, years, you know, as they grow up, they need to believe that how they feel is real and it matters and that their feelings matter just as much as anyone else's feelings. And as long as that isn't there, that child is going to believe that their feelings matter less. You know, if they could look at themselves and see that sometimes um, that they're not able to manage their own emotions and that they've been blaming her for that, that they haven't been taking the role of adults, that, you know, they've made her the parent, really. They've made her look after them. And what that will have done to Caitlin, that that will have taught her to take care of someone else's feelings before her own and that her feelings are not a priority, that um, trusting her feelings might get her into trouble and, and it's wrong to do that. You know, that she's not allowed to express frustration, she's not allowed to put down boundaries because she'll be thought of badly. She'll be thought of as this um, poisonous person that she's not entitled to a private life, that telling this white lie, you know, um, when she had, there was no law, she was 18, she didn't have to be honest about where she's spending her nights, you know, but, but by giving herself this privacy, um, she's been so punished for it, that she's been separated from her brothers, that They've been taught to think badly of her for doing this, that she's, she's been told that her parents no longer trust her, and so on. You know, if her parents could look at why she might have lied, that she didn't feel allowed to have this, um, you know, her own decisions respected. And, uh, and if they could think about the way that they have broken her trust and they've turned it all around and made themselves into these victims, that they haven't considered how much of a, you know, what a huge impact changing the locks would have on their daughter. And instead they've put their feelings first about being told this little white lie. And, and the consequences of that, the trust that has been broken for Caitlin, you know, that she doesn't believe now that her parents are on her side. And now all these measures they've taken to try to prove themselves right, and the impact that will have had on Caitlin, how humiliating it would be, you know, to have this broadcast sent out to the world about how wrong she is when she talks about her upbringing, um, to have her photos all over the place, when, when everyone else's faces are hidden, her birthday cards opened in front of everyone. Because, you know, if they think that this is helping her, they're really mistaken. And I believe that they do, you know, I believe that for sure, part of this, you know, part of their motive in doing this has been to um, try to wake her up and remind her of her old self. But the problem is that I think that who she was was someone who um, didn't tell them how she was actually doing, didn't feel able to be honest about how her parents could make her feel because then she'd be held responsible for their feelings about that. People have said they hope the parents are watching these videos, you know, especially the mother. They've said, oh, I hope her mum watches these videos. Um, and, and I assume that that's because they think that that will help her to see things differently. But, but you know, I don't think that that's realistic. I, and I don't want to rule it out, of course not. But I do think it's highly unlikely that watching these videos I've put out would suddenly make her mother see herself for who she is and see her behaviours for what they are, you know, and um, start to actually put herself into her daughter's shoes. I think it's much more likely that whatever she hears, she will twist to fit with her version of events.
And I want to read you these last few comments because I want to show another example of trying to rationalise with a flying monkey. Because it can be so frustrating, you know, you can do that until you're blue in the face. You can think, well, if I could just explain it clearly enough. But it just doesn't work like that. So this was put under my first video of this series, which was over an hour long. So there were many examples in this video of both parents not respecting their daughter's feelings and, you know, invalidating them. And, um, and yet, after watching an hour of this, of me talking and of Caitlin's mother reading out these text messages um, that I then analyse, you know, and, and talk about what is so narcissistic about them. After all of that, this is how she responds. I hope you can realise you have limited information. If it was just about the parents, she would not have thrown all her friends away and extended family too and 100% of her past for Jim. Let's not forget Jim is the manic bipolar scam artist who twists everything and the parents were trying unsuccessfully to do what they thought they could in a Jim controlled situation. The focus needs to be on helping Caitlin escape and exposing Jim so he can't keep hurting people. Those who know this family in person can vouch they are good. No one is perfect and you did make some valid points. I just want Caitlin to live her life, her dreams. She chose her college major job and so much more. Her parents supported her decisions as she was growing up. It was just the path she was taking with Jim they didn't approve. So she's watched my video about Caitlin's parents. And if we're to summarise, what she's done is she has told me I don't know enough about the situation. She's told me that the parents um, shouldn't be to blame, that this is about Jim. Um, and then she's, she's made a, a small side note to say that I did make some valid points. And then she's gone back to talking about what good parents Caitlin's parents are. And if you look at the other comments under that video, 99.9% .9 of them are from people who are feeling um, really uncomfortable about the mother and father's behaviour, in particular the mother's behaviour, because she, um, you know, because most of the video is about her. And here's how I responded. The message in this video is that not everyone will fall for a man like Jim. Someone already has to have experienced learned helplessness for a sociopath to be capable of manipulating them. They pick their victims carefully. The parents' actions made it easy for him. Yes, no one is perfect, so the parents need to accept that, act like adults and see where they've been going so wrong. They need to stop trying to prove how right they were and how wrong Caitlin was. That really is the last thing she needs. It will keep her doubting her own feelings and experiences, which is what got her into this mess and will make it impossible for them to build trust with her. There is no point in the focus being to help Caitlin escape, as you suggest. No one can get Caitlin out of this relationship except her because she's an adult and she doesn't want to leave him. But the reason for this is because of her learned helplessness. Wouldn't it be good if there was someone who really understood that, who she could trust when she comes out of it? As you can imagine, she will have a lot of healing to do. And the most useful thing for her at that time will be for her to have her experiences and feelings validated so she can learn to trust herself. Her parents are doing the opposite of that. And from the text, it looks like they have a habit of this. You may have good intentions, but always defending the parents' actions and pointing the finger at Caitlin, whether you think her behaviour is Jim's fault or not, is not helping the parents or Caitlin at all. I will talk about all of this further in the next videos. Please watch them. And I look at a couple of your responses to people. It may offend you a little to watch that because I disagree with your approach, but please do anyway, because you asked me for advice for the parents. If you watch these videos without always trying to think about how right they were and how wrong Caitlin's behaviour has been, and while instead trying to understand why Caitlin has behaved as she has, you might have a chance of putting this across to the parents. Maybe if you can get your head around all of this, you will even be able to convince them to watch them. 
I think it's likely that they will always have a need to judge her and to not understand her experiences because that way they can avoid responsibility. But any tiny amount of genuine responsibility they can take for their behaviour towards Caitlin will help her to heal. And the response was, I will watch to see if constructive advice is offered. So that's after I've just said all of this. You know, <laughs> this is after. If you look at, you know, the really all of this that I've written is the message of all of the videos. There isn't any more advice beyond that. You know, it's all there. And yet she's, she, it's as if she's read it, but it's as if not one word of that has actually sunk in. She has immediately changed the subject again to talk about Jim and how terrible Jim is. She, you know, towards the end, she says, you vastly underestimate the power of a good-looking, charming, charismatic, scam, con artist. And this is after I've said that someone already has to have experience, learned helplessness for a sociopath to be capable of manipulating them. So I've made it clear by that, that I understand the kind of person um, James is. But she couldn't take that in. Because if she had, if she'd read that, they pick their victims carefully. The parents' actions made it easy and so on. If she'd really read all of that, then she would have to have seen that this didn't start with Jim. And she doesn't want to see that. And even since then, you know, she's finally conceded, OK, maybe they shouldn't have locked her out. I see what you mean. But that doesn't change anything. You know, that that's just one action. Oh, yes, they did do one thing wrong. But... There's no understanding. You know, she's seen these videos and it's literally gone in one ear and out the other. And I honestly think that it's very likely that that will be the case with the mother. Because what, what you can see throughout these videos is how important it is to both of the parents and to their flying monkey to keep... Um, to keep making sure that um, the parents are protected, that, that they were in the right, that Caitlin was in the wrong, and that this is all Jim's fault. And when she's advised that seeing things differently would be much better for Caitlin, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it's not her priority. So I'm going to leave it here. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and please hit the notification bell so that you can get notifications when I post a video.